Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's talk about Jupiter's Aurora Borealis, also known as the Northern Lights. Of course, we might as well call it the Southern Lights as well, because usually we have what we call Northern Lights both at the North Pole and at the South Pole. But before we get into the details, let's look at the differences between the Earth's Borealis and Jupiter's Aurora Borealis. Well, it turns out the main difference, well, the main difference, I guess you can call it that, is that the Earth's is generated by the Sun and Jupiter's is self-generated. So that alone would indicate there's a huge difference between how the Aurora Borealis is generated on the Earth and on Jupiter. So let's first look at the Earth. The Earth is generated by the Sun, meaning that the magnetic field of the Sun has a tremendous influence on the Earth's magnetic field. Earth is about five times as close, or you say Jupiter is five times as far away from the Sun as the Earth, so there's much more interaction between the magnetosphere of the Earth and the Sun's magnetic field. On top of that, the Sun's magnetic field is extremely active and goes through cycles of activity. Those are the 11-year solar cycles. There are times that things are kind of quiet, and then there's times that things are very turbulent on the sun. And that's because the center of the sun rotates faster than the poles, and therefore the magnetic, internal magnetic field structure of the sun gets completely twisted up. And once that happens, there's a lot of activity happening on the sun, a lot of sunspots forming, magnetic fields popping out of the sun, and the magnetic fields reaching out into space away from the sun, they start going haywire. Haywire is kind of a scientific term, I suppose. And those variations of magnetic field then affect the Earth's magnetic field, and the Earth's magnetic field feels a pull towards the sun, and so the magnetic field gets stretched out to the sun, and then just as a rubber band, when the, when the force kind of diminishes, it snaps back and just goes back and forth like that, especially during the high sun activity during that 11-year cycle. As these magnetic fields pop back down towards the Earth, it causes ripples, kind of like waves, we gave those a name, they're called the alpha waves, and as the solar wind particles, the solar wind particles are ions and electrons that are being pushed out away from the sun at very high speeds, at thousands of miles or thousands of kilometers per second, as they reach the Earth and they reach that receding with waves accelerated magnetosphere, they get caught up in that and accelerate it towards the Earth. As they approach the Earth, they will then bounce into the magnetosphere, which causes them to deflect either to one direction or the other direction, whether or not they're positive or negative charges, and then they come around, loop around, and the magnetosphere tends to kind of diminish towards the pole regions, because that's the nature of magnetic fields, that they start at the poles, they loop out, and so those particles can then slam into the polar regions, both at the North and the South Pole, and when they do at very high velocities, they ionize the, the air molecules, and as they're being ionized, the, the electrons jump up and down, and then they begin to glow as they come back down, they give off the color specific to the various ions that are in the atmosphere, or the various molecules that are in the atmosphere, where the electrons keep going up and down. So that is the methodology by which, yeah, that's, that's a bit noisy, okay, all right. So that is the, the methodology by which the Earth forms the, the Aurora Borealis, which is therefore primarily controlled and directed by the activity of the Sun and the solar wind and the interaction between the solar wind and the Earth's magnetic field. Jupiter, however, is very different. Now the magnetic field, the magnetosphere on Jupiter is much larger and much stronger. And therefore we have this enormously strong magnetic field, but then it's also around a giant planet that rotates at a very high rotational rate. In less than 10 hours per rotation, this whole magnetic field gets rotated at very high velocities. And whenever we have a moving magnetic field and it passes by particles, well, those particles feel an enormous amount of force. That force equivalent um, 
well, we can equate it to a potential difference of about 10 million volts. So there's an enormous acceleration of those charged particles, electrons and, and positive particles, that are then get accelerated. And as they get accelerated, they slam into the atmosphere of Jupiter, especially again at the pole region, just like for the Earth. That's where the magnetic field kind of dips in. And as they slam into the pole regions, they form these big rings of aurora borealis that are always present. Now, of course, with the naked eye, we don't see those, but under X-ray vision, uh, with telescopes up in space, we can clearly see the large rings of aurora borealis that are both at the North Pole and South Pole continuously. But therefore, the big difference is that here, it's the fast rotation of the enormously powerful and large magnetic field, magnetosphere, that gets rotated very fast, creates a very high potential difference, causes the particles to accelerate very quickly towards the poles, and that's what sets up the aurora borealis there. Big difference. Now, we're going to get into the details exactly of how and where those particles come from, where, how it works and where those particles come from, because after all, if it's not the solar wind that's causing it, then what particles are we talking about that causes the aurora borealis? And then you'll see that not only that, there's this variation, this periodic variation that we discovered, and we need to be able to explain all that as well. So stay tuned in the next video. We'll get into the details of how the aurora, aurora borealis is generated on Jupiter, down to the fine details.